Hey guys, welcome back. So today's video is going to be about how I scored this bag in Paris. Now, for those of you that follow me on Instagram, if you don't, this is my Instagram handle here. I asked you, were you interested in me sharing about how I got this bag? Because the system has changed yet again. And for those of you that may be new here, you might think, what do you mean yet again, Mel? For my longtime followers, you know that when I went to Paris about a year and a half ago, I reported on the new system, which was back then. And that's when I scored my Malakit Birkin. And I will link that video up here if you were interested in watching because that was an ordeal. And I came back and reported on that because it took me like six attempts over three different stores. But this experience was completely different. Now, I'm just going to put a little disclaimer out there and said, this whole video is based on my experience only. I'm still going to be giving you little tips which I think may help, but the main thing is that I'm going to be taking you through the new system because it is online now. It's not about lining up at the store. So that's going to be the first part. I'm just going to go through the new system, what you should expect, and then I am of course going to unbox this beauty with you and then to finish off, just end off with a summary of my little tips and of course, sharing the price because you guys know I always do that. So let's get right into the video. Okay, so let's talk about the new system. How has the system changed? Firstly, there is no more lining up at the store. The one thing that I noticed was that there were still people lining up at the front entrance of the store. And I did feel really sorry for those people because they had spent hours in line only to be told that the system has now changed and sorry, you need to go online. And this system has been in place since the 31st of August. But they used to give out these little cards saying, oh, the system has now changed. But I didn't see that happening when I visited. So really, this video is also for all you guys out there that may not be aware that the system changed. Okay, so the day before you are going to try, because how it works is that, for example, just say you arrive to Paris on a Wednesday. You need to actually make the appointment the day before, or I should say try for the appointment because this new system, it's like a lottery sort of system where everyone goes online and puts their name down. And I do not know how Hermes decides this, but they will decide whether you even get an appointment. So that's step number one to try secure appointment. So on the day before you want your appointments, what you need to do is you need to log on to www.hermesforball.com and you need to do this between 10.30 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. Paris time because that's when the store is open. So for us, I knew we were going to arrive to Paris Saturday afternoon. So there was no point in me on the Friday requesting an appointment on the Saturday, if that makes sense. But if you know that you are going to be arriving earlier in the morning, then what I would suggest is before your flight register, just as long as it's between those times, um, I just said 10.30 and 6.30 Paris time, then that way, if you want, um, you if you may be able to score an appointment, you might just have to rush from the airport straight to your appointment. But because I knew that we were going to be arriving that day late, I didn't even try. So what you do is, I'm going to put a screenshot here. You fill in all your details, you know, your name, surname, you're going to need your passport and the mobile number. So we use our Australian mobile number um, because you are going to receive a text. So after you press validate, then this is the next thing you get you are going to come up with a screen and they're going to ask you to enter your activation code because they're going to send you an SMS and then you've got to enter that code in. Once you've entered that code in, it will take you to the next screen. The next screen basically it just says your appointment has been made 
and you will get an SMS um, approximately 7.30 that day letting you know whether you were successful or not. So the first step is to try and secure an appointment. But even after uh, my first attempt, which we did get the appointment, I tried another two times just to see what would happen. But anyway, I'll go through that a little bit later. So then after 7.30 p.m. that day, you will get an SMS and it will either say one of two messages. If you are successful, you get a message and I'm just going to refer down to my phone, but I'm going to put it up here too. You will, it will say your appointment is confirmed. You'll be welcome at so-and-so date at 10.30 a.m. precise at our football store. And that is the message that I received because what I did, because I was there on a Saturday, I quickly logged onto the site and tried my luck to get an appointment for the Monday. By the way, guys, Sunday, the store is closed. So you can't even log on to try and get an appointment. If you make the appointment on Saturday, it is going to be for the Monday, just to let you guys know. And, or if you're not successful, you get a message saying, Thank you for your keen interest. Unfortunately, due to a large number of requests, we are unable to consider your application. Our hostess remains at your entire disposal for any additional information. So you'll either get, yep, you were successful, or two, you'll get that text. And my first tip is that if you are with someone, just to double your chances, get them to register as well. I did a little experiment where when I logged on the Saturday to try and get the appointment for Monday, I did it, I don't know, I can't remember what time, but in the afternoon. And then I got hubby to log on, but I asked him, oh, don't do it the same time as me. Let's wait a couple of hours. And the interesting thing was on the Monday, both of us had the same appointment time at 10.30 a.m. I'm not sure how that works. I, I don't know, but I'm just reporting to you what happened in my case. Now, I know that there is people saying that, oh, it's better to go with your spouse or, you know, if you're there with your mom or sister, it's always better to go with someone. And I do think that there's truth in that because one thing that, you know, the Hermes sales associates are wary of is that they do not like resellers. So if you go alone, they may think you are a reseller. However, I don't think it hurts to put in two times because just say one of you is successful and one of you isn't, you'll still go together. But in our case, we had always planned to go to the appointment together, but both of us had the appointment at 10.30. So I'm like, okay, let's just go separately and we will see how we go. So that was just in my case, guys. But yes, whoever you're traveling with, try. And like me, you can try a couple hours apart or you can try at the same time. I don't know. I've also heard reports where people that have been there three days have tried each and every day and they did not get an appointment. So all you can do is try. Like I said, it's a lottery system. So guys, day before register, that is going to be for the following day if you do get your appointment. So if you are successful, what happens on the day of your appointment? And what you will get is a text. In my case, because I got a 10.30, I got a reminder SMS and I'll put that up here as well, saying, you know, reminder, your appointment's at 10.30, make sure you're there precisely at 10.30. But even if you have a later appointment, I do believe that, as I said before, that they will update you. So I just found out from a friend, yes, you do actually get updated through your SMS. You get a link which you will click on there and that will sort of update you if your time is going to move. And it does kind of can move within, you know, anywhere from half an hour to one hour. But when it is confirmed, you will get another text saying that, you know, your sales associate is now available to meet you. Can you please meet the hostess at the leather department counter? Anyway, what you do is, if you have a morning appointment like me, you go to the cellier entrance, not the main entrance. There is a side entrance that says cellier. You, you enter through that entrance and go straight up to level one. You will be greeted by a hostess. The hostess will then check your passport and then she will assign you to a specific sales associate. Now, the reason why I said don't line up at the main entrance is because... I did feel very, very sorry for a lot of those people because there was still a huge queue out there and all these people did not 
know that a new system had been implemented. And I think if you have a later appointment, I don't think it exactly matters if you go through the main or the cellular entrance, you just need to make your way up to level one. Tip number two is that I do think it pays to dress nicely. This was what I was wearing, and I'll insert a picture here. Now, I'm not saying, guys, you need to dress up in a suit or be super, super formal, but just dress nicely. I don't, you're not going to turn up in track pants. The most important thing is that I think that you need to feel comfortable and you need to be yourself. But yeah, I just think it helps to dress nicely because I hate to say, but that you do get judged on your appearance. And this is what, I don't think this is just my opinion, but those that have gone there as well and just reports that I hear and things that I've read as well. And they are the ones that do have the power ultimately to decide whether they're gonna give you a bag or not. Rightly or wrongly, that's just the way it is. Okay, so during your appointment time, the first question that the sales associate is going to ask you is, you know, how can I help you? What bags are you looking for? Now, the amount of times I have heard the first thing people launch to is like, I'm looking for a Birkin or Kelly, just straight off. I guess like sort of put yourself in the sales associate's position. I know work, having worked in retail for many, many years, I really appreciate when someone, I don't know, just might ask how my day is and that's always what I like to do and I know my husband did that too. I, I have no idea what my husband's going to say but yeah just I think it's important to try and build up rapport. I mean don't be too sucky as well and I think it really depends on your sales associate. I also think it's important that before you go you've done your research as well. So tip number three is make sure you do your research because when you do your research the sales associates can tell that oh okay this person is an Hermes lover. And I'm not saying you need to know everything about your Hermes, but if you've done your research and you know even the names, like for example, just say you wanted, I don't know, like a gray Birkin or something like that. The fact that you've done your research and you say, oh, actually, I'm really looking for um, gray Birkin. I'm open to hardware colors in a size 30, but maybe like a Tain or Gris Moet or Gris Asphalt. It just sort of shows that you're aware of the names instead of saying, oh, greys and blues and, and things like that. I just think that they may help if you actually know the names of the colors that you are looking for. When you are requesting um, the bags, be detailed and if they do ask you questions, just make sure you know in your head um, what you are after because even when I was giving my list, my sales associate said to me, would you consider a bigger size? And for me, I knew I wouldn't. So I said, no, I wouldn't. However, I'm open to hardware colors. I don't mind. So know in your head what you would be happy to settle with because you don't always get your first preference. They are going to look at what they have in stock and if it matches what you have requested, then perhaps, you know, they will offer you a bag. But if you are, if you've only given them two options and you're really strict with like gold or silver and that's it, it may be harder. Now, I'm not also saying that, you know, you just accept anything, but just give them a few options to work with. Also, I do want to mention is that if you have purchased from Hermes before, they know all your history. Once, you, you know, that's why you give them the passport sort of number because they can bring everything up. Also get asked a lot, Mel, I have never been to Paris before. I have no history. Do I have any chances of scoring a Birkin or Kelly? And the answer to that is yes, you do have a chance because I have seen stories. I have read stories. I've seen things on YouTube where people have no history and they've scored a Birkin or Kelly. Do I think it helps if you have history? Absolutely. I do think it helps, but don't ever just go and buy for the sake of uh, wanting to get a bag because it does work differently. I know in Asia, like Hong Kong or Singapore and you know, other reports that sometimes you're offered a bag if you spend a certain amount. Now, I don't think that's necessarily the case in Paris at all. But if you have some sort of history, yes, I think it helps. But I, but as I said, people that haven't bought anything have also been able to get a bag as well. Once you've given them the whole list, they'll say, okay, I'm just going to go check for you. Please wait here. Five minutes, 10 minutes, I don't know how long. They'll either come back and say, sorry, I don't have anything um, in your specifications, or they will say, excuse me, madam, or sir, can you please come with me? Now, when you get the, excuse me, madam, or sir, can you come with me? 
that is a very good sign because they're going to take you away to a more secluded part of the store and then they will offer you a bag. Back to my story. Now, the funny thing is, guys, that I actually did not get offered this bag. It was my husband that got offered this bag. So anyway, my sales associate, let me tell you what happened with me. My sales associate was so nice, came back. Um, he did actually hint to me, you know, if you were after a bigger size, I may have been able to help you, but I was not after a bigger size. And he came back with um, a Rodeo. I didn't request a Rodeo at all. In the whole excitement, I did want a Rodeo, by the way, but I didn't request it. So I knew he was really looking out for me because Rodeos are pretty hard to get to. And he goes, I looked at your history and I saw that in the past you had bought a Rodeo. So I thought that you may want this. I bought the Rodeo out. He bought out a Rodeo, another, um, the horseshoe charm. And he bought out a couple of the newer bags that I was actually trying on because I did show interest in them. And of course, I was a little bit disappointed. He said, um, we're just very low in stock. And uh, I do think we're going to have more stock on the Thursday because we're going to be closed on the Wednesday. But I did bring you this Rodeo. Uh, did you want it? So I thought that was really, really nice of him. And I said, yes, uh, I would like it. Thank you. And because I think we had really good rapport, if you do have really good rapport um, with your sales associate, and even if they say, oh, I don't have anything for you, get their name because... If you request an appointment the following day and you are successful again, you can actually ask the hostess. Well, this is what, you know, my, that's the guy, the sales associate I was dealing with said to me, um, if you are successful, just request to see me. So I was hoping that, you know, if I was successful in getting another appointment that I could see him again because, yeah, we just talked really, really well. So that was my experience. Okay, let's just quickly go to hubby. Hubby said, I asked him, what did you say to sales associate? You know, give me all the goss. And he said, I was just really nice to her. I just told her the truth. We were here for our anniversary. I really want to buy an anniversary present for my wife. Can you help me? And that particular essay was just so helpful. Them two just got along really, really well. And he was offered the bag and he was offered a bag and a Rodeo as well. Oh, by the way, guys, in terms of the Rodeo and the other stuff that I picked up, I would do that in a separate haul, just to let you know. But that's going to take me to reveal what I got here. Just before I reveal that, I just want to say, so even if you are unsuccessful, just keep trying. Remember, just say, for example, like we went there on the Monday. I was unsuccessful. So what I did was I logged on to Hermes for, for work again, and I requested appointment for the Tuesday. So just keep doing that because... As I said, I know a lot of people that have been there for a few days, they've tried every single day and they haven't been able to get an appointment. And other people, we were just really lucky that the both of us got an appointment on the first day. I do think it was luck. Okay, I'm going to stop there for now, open this, and then keep continuing my story because this is the really, really exciting part. Any guesses what I got, guys? Okay, so big orange box with the ribbon. I'm gonna open it up. So this is not a true unboxing because obviously I did unbox it already, but uh, what I did, and I got asked this quite a lot in my last video, was I hand carried the bag and I packed the box and checked in the box. And I just like covered it all in like my jumpers so that the corners wouldn't be wrecked. And it came out perfect. So to reveal, This beauty. Well, actually, I haven't even revealed it yet. Let me just put the box down. And I got. Dun, dun, dun. <gasps> okay. So I present to you. Okay, so I didn't say I got. Hubby got. Hubby scored. This Kelly. 28 cellier cellier means it is see how it looks more sort of like rigid and triangular um and the edges are sort of pointed the cellier um kelly in with palladium hardware in black in epsom leather gosh that was very long-winded 
but K28 Cilier Noir Palladium Hardware. That was pretty much, in terms of Kelly, I had two top choices. This one here in a 28 or size 25, and my second option was also the Rouge Cassac, but I was just so happy I got this. So let me just uh, open it up and I'll tell you what's inside. So I have actually used this already because I couldn't wait to use it. And the timing, guys, is just so perfect. Like, so on the Monday, that was the day before our anniversary. So that was pretty much like we got the bag straight away. And as I said, for those of you that followed me and been following me for a while, you would know that the last time it was not so easy. I do know what an ordeal it can be because look, I went through it when I went through, you know, when I tried six times the very first time. So if you are unsuccessful, please don't be too dismayed. Just keep trying again um, with the appointment system. And, you know, as I said, it's not all about getting a bag, but obviously if you get a bag, it is amazing. And, uh, okay. This is one of my, you know, dream combos. So, if I open the bag up, there are two dust bags. This longer one here is where the strap is, which is here. Oops, I think something fell out of there. So I will attach that on. I will also do uh, a little mod shot for you on what this looks like on me because I don't own a Cellier. You guys know that I, I have a Kelly, but it is in the return shape and it's in the size 32. So this is smaller. And then in this little bag here, you will get the clochette and also the lock, which is still all wrapped up. So as you can see, it is a lot more structured. The Cellier is a lot more structured and I'm just gonna close it up. And that is what it looks like. Let me just give you a close-up view. So Epsom leather is very, very durable. In a cellier, I think it is the ideal leather. Um, for return, I do prefer the Togo. But isn't it just beautiful? It's so classic. I really wanted the palladium. I just think silver and the black is um, a little bit more modern. It's still a dream. It is just the best, best anniversary gift and I'm just so 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 wrapped to be able to get this bag and yeah as I said just icing on the cake so thank you hubby that you got this bag and yeah I'm I'm just so happy to share this with you guys um later on down the track I will do like a cellier versus return are you guys interested in me doing that if so comment below so that is my beautiful, beautiful new Kelly bag. Now I'm gonna just leave the Kelly down here while I talk about um, the processes in the other store because I did go and visit the other stores so that I could report back to you guys too. So if you are not successful at the Mothership or the Fubul store, there are two other stores in Paris that you can try your luck. One being the Sivray store, the second being the George Sank store. I wanted to visit both stores just so that I could report back to you guys uh, on the system and if it was the same, if it was different. And I can say that both of them, have, all of them have different systems and it's not the online system as I just reported then. That only applies to the Mothership store. Okay, so for Sivray's, it also opens at 10.30. On the day that I went, I went about 11, but I do suggest you getting there like early-ish because what you do is you go down the stairs and head straight to the bag department. And there is a counter, um, I'll insert a pic, and there's gonna be um, a hostess there. And what they'll do is they'll ask for your name and your passport and they just put you down on this list. And then depending on how many people are in front of you, they'll just ask you to take a seat and then they'll call out your name. But for me, I think I had like two people in front of me, but I wanted to do some shopping anyway. So I told her, oh, I'm just going to be, you know, in the shoe section as I wanted to check out product. So when they called my name, I was assigned to SA. Same thing as what happened at the Mothership store. They will ask you, you know, how can I help you? Sort of what bags are you after? And they will also ask for your passport as well. Because like I said, they do check your history. Because uh, if, for example, it was my husband uh, that requested that, 
he would have had on his records that he's got this Kelly. So I don't think that they would have offered him a bag because there is a one bag policy in terms of Hermes, Birkins and Kelly's. I'm not 100% sure on Constance, but definitely with the Hermes, Birkin and Kelly, it's one uh, every season, uh, one every half a year. That doesn't apply, guys, to like the other bags, like the Evelyn and uh, garden parties and things like that. I don't think that that applies to them. But yes, the Birkin and Kelly, definitely. So anyway, I talked to this um, sales associate. Once again, I tried to be nice, be friendly. The report wasn't as good, but she was, you know, lovely. She said she checked the stock. She came back and she said, sorry, um, not able to help you. And one really interesting thing was I also asked her, um, did you actually have any rodeos? And she said, sorry, no rodeos. So I'm like, okay, that's fine. And so I just thanked her for her time and I wanted to shop anyway. I wanted to visit the twilly section and the small leather goods section which was like next to each other and I met a really really nice sales associate because I was looking at some twillies because I you know I love my twillies and I picked um a couple of the twillies and then uh I asked to look at the Bastia coin purse because you guys know I'm a huge fan of the Bastia coin purse but look they didn't have any colors and then I asked her oh did you have a rodeo and she said yeah I might have one and she got me a rodeo so downstairs they said they didn't have a rodeo but then she had a rodeo so it just goes to show I do think the sales associate depending on what you know they want to do because they do have the power they will offer you what they want I do recommend you don't get there around lunchtime because the hostess did say around lunchtime like 12 1 o'clock they go on lunch so there's less sales associate so you may be waiting a while so either go first thing in the morning like 10 30 11 or go sort of like later on in the afternoon that's what I was told anyway now, for the George V store, it just so happened that when I went to the George V store, they weren't at their normal location. They, that store is actually closed for refurbishment. So the new store, the temporary store, is just across the road. So for those of you that are traveling to Paris, I do think the temporary store is going to be there for quite a few months while the other store is getting refurbished. And when I went to that store, it was very, very crowded and there didn't appear to be any system. People were sort of like sitting, waiting around to be served because if you can catch a sales associate, they would help you out. So no sort of system there. Um, we did manage to get seen by a sales associate and he was really, really nice. Just looking for things for hubby as well. I was just sort of asking what was the system there and they said, and that particular sales associate just saying, if we have stock and, um, and we can offer you something, we will always try and help you. You know, pretty vague, I know, but at least I want to report there is no particular system there. So hopefully you just meet a nice sales associate and, you know, hopefully they can offer you something if they do have stock. I do want to point out though that because I was there, I just happened to be there on their opening day when they moved to their temporary store, maybe that system is going to change because it's a new store. Maybe they're just seeing how things are going. But as far as I am aware, and the last time I visited, there wasn't an exactly a system. So just don't quote me on that. And if anyone knows anything different, do share because sharing is caring. But I'm just reporting what happened with me on that day. Okay, so let's talk about price because you know I always share it. How much was this beauty? This was 7,200 euro. It is so much cheaper over there than in Australia and I know definitely in the US as well because in Australia I don't know the exact price but I do think this retails for around 14,000 or over so you are saving a lot of money so 7,200 euro what happens as is that you will get 10% of that back in terms of your VAT refund and that will go back on the credit card you use to pay the bag on Another question I got asked a lot is that when you come back into the country, um, do you declare this bag? And the answer is yes, you do tick that it's over 
you know, the, I think it was $900 amount. I think after that, for all my Australian um, followers out there, because the, I'm not sure how it works with other airports, but with Melbourne, the airport sort of system has changed. And if you've got a chip, it's a lot quicker process. And I don't know how they mark it because they don't see your declaration form. It's really up to when you're when you've collected your luggage and the guy that there whether you go straight out or you go through another entrance so i don't know how that works we would just wave it straight through i don't know but always declare it because if you don't and you get found out you can get in trouble so yes that is the price and i guess that is why so many people go to europe because you are saving you know three four plus thousand dollars so guys, let me quickly summarize everything I've said. I know it's been a kind of long video, but you know I like to go in depth and I really want this video to help as many of you as possible so that you can potentially score your dream bag, whatever that may be. So let me summarize quickly what my tips were. First tip is if you are traveling with anyone else, uh, make sure that the both of you try the online system because one of you may get accepted, one of you may not. Who knows, but it just increases your chances. Although hubby and I were successful in our first attempt and we both got appointments, I did want to try again for you guys just to see what would happen. And I tried two other times and I also got hubby to try. I think he tried one other time and all the times after we were unsuccessful. And I also tried at different times of the day. So first one being, you know, straight away when it opened. Another time I tried, you know, around lunchtime. Another one I tried um, or hubby tried like when it was just about to close. So I don't know if trying at certain times helps, but it just seems to be a bit of a lottery system. Tip number two, if you are successful, you know, just dress nicely. I don't think it hurts if you wear some Hermes if you have it. Uh, I didn't carry an Hermes bag. Like I said, I had a Chanel bag, but I was wearing an Hermes belt and an Hermes ring. I did see a lot of people carrying Birkins and Kellys. Do I think it's necessary? No, but I don't think it hurts to wear a bit of Hermes you know, if you're comfortable with it. But as I said, even with the dressing part, uh, don't go too crazy. Be comfortable, but be presentable. Tip number three, with your sales associate, just treat them respectfully. Be nice to them. Try and build up rapport. If you guys are getting along, that I, I mean, just with anything, if you're talking to anyone and you're getting along, they're probably a little bit more willing to help you. I forgot to mention this before, but if you have a special occasion, do mention that as well because everyone likes to help someone out if it's an anniversary or you're celebrating a special milestone or birthday or something like that. So if you do have that, mention that as well. And yeah, just be nice because more often than not, don't take it personally. Most of the time, the answer is more no's than yeses. Tip number four, if you are unsuccessful at the Mothership store, there are two other stores that you can try your luck at. And that is the Severe store and the George uh, Sank store. So do try that out. You never know. If you do have the time, I do recommend you trying those stores out as well because the system isn't that online system. And my final tip, tip number five, is that if you do have a list, um, do purchase things that are on your list. I'm not saying, you know, buy things that you don't want to buy. If there is something specific you're looking for, do buy. If you're unsuccessful, shop anyway. Shop for the things you want because I know that they've got such a huge range over there, so much more than what we have in Australia. So I had a list myself anyway. So I do think that if you do purchase stuff and you do have a little bit of a purchase history, I do think that helps, but I don't think that's the deal breaker because as I said before, there are people that have bought nothing and, you know, first time customers and they've gone in and walked out with a Birkin or Kelly. But, you know, it, I think it does help because they do check your history because two of the sales associates could quote off what I had bought previously. So guys, I really, really, really hope that this video has helped in me sharing my experience. It's really just to get um, it out there that the system has changed. You know, I, I wouldn't want any of you lining up for hours only being told, oh, you got to go on to the online system. So I really hope that this video helps. I hope that the tips have helped. If you have any other tips that you want to share with us, do leave them in the comments below. Thank you for always watching my videos, for all your support. Thank you for sharing in my joy and getting my new Kelly. And I will see you guys really soon in my next videos. The next videos that are coming up, which 
I do need to edit and there is a few to do it will be obviously my uh, come shopping with me in Paris and then I've got quite a few unboxings to do with you guys so stay tuned to those so if you haven't subscribed remember to hit that subscribe button because we're always coming up to 30k which I'm really excited about so thank you big kisses and I will talk to you guys soon bye